Dear students, in this module, we'll look at the web resources that are available online to actually use the trends that are there that exist within the RNA secondary structure and the databases that are formed from these trends. You know that RNA nucleotides, they fold onto themselves to form the secondary structure. But in nature, people have observed that there are patterns of this folding behavior. So if you know which patterns exist and which primary sequences give rise to these patterns, that, then this can be extremely helpful in pre predicting the secondary structure. Also, once you have these trends, then you can form a database of these trends and you can refer to these databases uh, while predicting the secondary structure. As an example, I have a sequence here for you. C-U-U-G-G, C-G-G. It occurs in a wide variety of RNA. And it always forms a hairpin loop. So, if you have this sequence in your primary structure, then you may want to label the secondary structure that is possible from this sequence to be a stable hairpin loop as well. And therefore, if you have more such sequences, then you can arrive at the secondary structure of an, from an unknown sequence by looking at the trends that exist in nature. And therefore, we can arrive at the likely secondary structure. One online resource is the RNA strand. The RNA strand contains known RNA secondary structures of any type and organism. The ultimate goal of this database is to incorporate a comprehensive collection of known RNA secondary structures and to provide us with simple tools of analysis, searching, and updating the proposed databases. Currently, this database has 4,666 secondary structures that are there and reported. There is also another very interesting resource which is available online freely that is called the RNA Bricks. The RNA Bricks is essentially a database of the RNA 3D structures and the motifs that are formed by these structures as well as their interaction with other proteins and RNA molecules. This database also provides the quality of each structure and other tools for searching this library. So essentially, if you have a one prime structure of the RNA, that is the sequence of RNA, then you can look at the RNA 3D BRICS database and see which structures are already reported and in which frequency and which are their interacting partners. So dear students, in conclusion, the RNAs have the primary structure, that is their sequence, which folds on to itself to make these secondary structures. And therefore, you need to predict these secondary structures if you have the primary sequence. Several tools and algorithms exist for this. And therefore, there are uh, lots of options for you. Interestingly, there are many patterns that exist in nature which you can also rely upon while predicting your secondary RNA structure. People have also built databases, as I just mentioned, from these reported RNA secondary structures and you can plug them into your algorithms and you can arrive at better predictions. These databases can essentially help you by acting as dictionaries. So these dictionaries contain all the possible structures that are reported and therefore you can look up the portions of your RNA sequence in these dictionaries and see if there is already a known secondary structure reported for them. And this can be extremely useful and a reference in your secondary structure prediction for RNA molecules.